the pharmacology of the benzodiazepines or what's known as sedative hypnotic class of, uh, of drugs. As I mentioned earlier, they're predominantly very selective central nervous system uh, depressants by enhancing the activity of gamma aminobutyric acid, the inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. So when we talk about the sedative hypnotic class of drugs, we want to talk about the sedative effects of the drug. And so listed under sedative effect, there's a calming effect, an anxiolytic effect, reduces anxiety. Uh, they're used in the treatment of alcohol or opiate uh, withdrawal, uh, acute uh, withdrawal of, of alcohol in people who are uh, addicted to alcohol or opiates can result in intense uh, anxiety uh, effects. So the sedative effect of the benzodiazepines can be used to alleviate some of the withdrawal effects, and it can also be used in the treatment of acute uh, uh, panic attacks, especially with some of the short-acting uh, benzodiazepines. The hypnotic effect of the benzodiazepines refers to the ability to produce drowsiness and uh, induce sleep. And some of the benzodiazepines are used predominantly to treat uh, uh, insomnia. Now, if we look at some of the other effects on the next slide, there is also an anesthetic effect uh, to the benzodiazepines. And they're often used as an adjunct with other anesthetic effects, especially in the induction of anesthesia. The drugs that are used, they have a rapid onset, very short duration of uh, action, and so they would be used as initial anesthetic agent or what be considered as a pre-anesthetic agent. So the short-acting benzodiazepines like uh, uh, midazolam and lorazepam are often used for this, uh, uh, for, this, for this effect. And they also have an amnesic effect. That means you, you, you forget about the effects of that. So uh, the, the, the benzodiazepines, like the short-acting, like Versed, lorazepam, are often used in office procedures like uh, endoscopy or colonoscopy procedures as a pre-anesthetic agent. So individuals who, are, who have these procedures performed on them essentially do not remember uh, having the procedure done on them. And for something like a colonoscopy, which is not an entirely pleasant uh, procedure, uh, Treatment with something like Versed, you don't, for, you, the individual forgets about the the, the procedure actually being uh, uh, performed on them. And some of the benzodiazepines are also used for their anti-seizure effect, uh, like uh, clonazepam or clonopin. It is often used uh, in the treatment of certain seizure disorders because these drugs can inhibit central nervous systems elliptiform electrical activity uh, uh, very, very selectively. Now, they're not used for all types of seizure uh, disorders, but are used for specialized seizure disorders, um, which, you know, really don't want to get into. They can also be used as a muscle relaxant, because the benzodiazepines can inhibit, can inhibit neuromuscular uh, nerve transmission. So people who are tense uh, or have muscle aches, uh, benzos can be used for that uh, as well. Now let's look on to, at the next slide and look at some of the side effects or some of the adverse uh, effects of benzodiazepines. In general, and I say in general, the benzodiazepines are generally very well tolerated by most individuals who have prescriptions for these drugs. And I think the fact that the benzodiazepines, uh, especially Librium and, and Valium, having been around for, uh, for 60 years, I think that's uh, testimony to their uh, generally well-tolerated, effective uh, drugs. But all drugs have side effects, and usually speaking, side effects are also dose-dependent, and also depending upon the duration of, uh, of, of uh, treatment. The, the minor side effects of benzodiazepines, and again, I want to emphasize these are very dose-dependent, include drowsiness, dizziness, nausea and vomiting. Uh, there are issues of motor uh, coordination. There's a warning of, uh, that when people are using uh, the benzodiazepines to exercise caution if they're driving until you 
know the effect of the drug on your motor coordination. And uh, the other minor side effect is anterograde amnesia. That is, you can't, the individual patient or the individual using the drug does not remember the events that are that, that have occurred shortly after taking the drug. And this can unfortunately be used for the various uh, uh, purposes, as we'll discuss a little bit uh, uh, a little bit later. Now, uh, there are some other adverse effects from long-term use of the benzodiazepine, and this is tolerance. People become tolerant to the effects of the benzodiazepine. So this requires larger doses to get the desired uh, uh, drug effect. Uh, this was not initially noticed at the time of the, that these drugs uh, were, were undergoing clinical trials because clinical trials generally last a uh, very short time. So the tolerance effects uh, were, were, were noted uh, with people who had been using uh, some of the benzodiazepines chronically. And what I mean by chronically is for years and years. So this result can result in both physical and psychological dependence upon these, uh, upon these drugs. And by withdrawing the benzodiazepines, withdrawal symptoms uh, occur. There is increased anxiety. If the benzos are used for anxiety, rapid withdrawal of these agents can, can, can cause an increased anxiety, which is much worse than the condition that they were initially uh, treated for. Uh, insomnia can occur, uh, withdrawing the agent, in certain cases, convulsions, and uh, severe hallucinations can also uh, occur. Now these, the tolerance effect usually occurs with uh, uh, chronic use, and basically what I mean by chronic use is there are individuals who have used benzodiazepines many, many years. Uh, now, there are also some major uh, adverse effects uh, that can result uh, from long-term use. And again, these are very, very uh, dose-dependent. They include uh, side effects like lethargy, uh, exhaustion, uh, mental confusion. This often occurs in elderly patients who've been on benzodiazepines for a very, very uh, uh, sustained period of, uh, of, of time. So elderly patients are especially susceptible to some of the major uh, side effects uh, of the benzodiazepines, although generally speaking, they're fairly well uh, uh, tolerated. Now with benzodiazepines, as, uh, as well as with uh, a lot of other drugs, drug interaction can occur. And what I mean by drug interaction, if you take one drug that has certain effects, you add another drug with certain effects. The, the, the use of multiple drugs, one plus one, doesn't necessarily equal two, but rather one plus one can add, uh, result in three. And so there's an additive effect of, uh, of, of using multiple, uh, multiple drugs. And the primary drug interaction with the, with the benzodiazepine involves the use of other central nervous system depressants at the same time with, uh, with benzodiazepine. And I'll use two examples, ethanol or alcohol. Uh, alcohol and benzodiazepines do not mix very well. Benzodiazepines and opiates do not mix uh, very well uh, either. And I could go on and on. I mean, enlist other drug uh, 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 but, but basically mixing uh, more than one central nervous system, uh, depressant is not a, uh, a, a, a very good uh, idea. Although I mentioned that the next slide, uh, although I mentioned that uh, the benzodiazepines are, are usually generally well uh, uh, tolerated by most people, uh, very, very serious adverse effects can occur, as shown on this uh, on the next slide. And this depicts the number of deaths from uh, use of benzodiazepine. And basically, this is a uh, bar graph showing the number of deaths from benzodiazepines uh, from 2002 to about 2015, the last year that I was able to get uh, really, really good uh, uh, good data on it. <clears throat> 
What's very unfortunate about this uh, graph is that the number of deaths resulting from benzodiazepines has been steadily increasing uh, for the last 14, 15 uh, years at an alarming way. Now, the number of deaths from benzodiazepines is a direct correlation with the number of prescriptions that have been written for benzodiazepines. With increased use of benzodiazepines, it's not surprising that unfortunately there is also a concomitant number increase in the number of deaths that are result from benzodiazepines. And the graph sort of breaks it down to uh, males versus females. Uh, males are much more much more likely to die from a uh, overdose of benzodiazepines than, um, than women. The next slide shows the uh, involvement of opioids and mixing basically opioids with benzodiazepines and looking at the incidence of uh, very serious adverse effects when opioids are uh, used in conjunction with benzodiazepines. And again, this is data from 2002 until uh, 2015. And the most surprising thing or the most uh, significant thing in this graph is that there's been a very, very large increase in benzodiazepine overdoses when used in conjunction with, uh, with opioids. And again, the, the bar graph generally uh, correlates with the increase in benzodiazepine prescriptions that have been written uh, over the years. Uh, if you look at the, the, the dark blue line on the graph, this is overdose effects with benzodiazepines without opioids. But when you add opioids and benzodiazepines, this is what I mean by the one plus one doesn't equal two, one plus one equals three in this case. So by adding opioids uh, along with, uh, with benzodiazepines, there's a huge, huge increase in uh, uh, serious adverse uh, side effects resulting from use of benzodiazepines in conjunction with opioids. I'm sure similar graphs are, are, are available if you combine benzodiazepines with, uh, with alcohol. And again, polypharmacy is very, very difficult to predict the type of uh, involvement that any patient is going to have when they combine uh, multiple, multiple uh, drugs. But in general, benzodiazepines used by themselves are generally uh, fairly well tolerated and relatively speaking are generally very, very